the Lord gave me a message on social distancing, which I look and I titled it how to be social distance from the devil. Because oftentimes the devil wants to he literally socialize with us on a daily basis, on a very regular basis and all that. Uh, knowingly or unknowingly, I'll tell you how. And we need to keep well, what I now titled as a social distances from the devil. Because number one, he's your enemy and you don't want to keep any relationship with your enemy. So I'm just going to share that as uh, I received the message, which was kind of funny, but it is true. Uh, I think, first of all, the Bible said encourages us that we should resist the devil and he will flee from us. And oftentimes the thing that happens in our life is that uh, what we don't pay attention to is that we have this temptation or call it the urge to do things that we know is contrary to the word of God as Christians. And after that we persuaded, we're persuaded from a voice within and that voice within persuades us until we do it. And when we do it, suddenly we realize that, hey, this is wrong. This is against the will of God for my life. We start regretting and uh, we go back to God for prayer, for forgiveness and all that stuff so that we can start all over again. It's a common place in our life as a Christian, even as a non-Christian, it's even worse. Because as Christians, we become conscious of our lifestyles, you know. But as non-Christians, you are not conscious of anything. You just do whatever you, your mind tells you to do. Now, let me speak first as to Christians, then I'll come again to as non-Christians, how to be social distance with, how to social, maintain a social distance with the devil. Every day, he comes, he throws things at us. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Keep suggesting all sorts of ideas that seem right unto us, you know, in our ways. And uh, oftentimes, when the pressure is too much, we, we just cave in without thinking. Of course, we later regret that and they get caught up with us, we regret it. And for us to maintain a good social distance with the devil, number one, we need to understand the Word of God. In other words, we need to pay attention to the Word of God, meaning we need to read or study the Word of God very regularly. In all my preaching, I emphasize that. Reason being that, there's no way we can operate with God outside of His Word. So it's important we study the Word on a regular basis. Because as we study the Word on a regular basis, it, it, it takes root in our life. You see, if we want to know something, that's why we go to school, we go to colleges and all that. For us to know, we have to study. If we don't study, we're not going to know about anything. So to know God is to study about Him. As we study more regularly, we start to understand His Word through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then we start to acknowledge and we start to work according to His Word. And number two, we need to, after that, first, of course, we acknowledge the Lord. And number two, we need to follow with Him. In other words, we follow it up, what we study with prayer. You know, it's good to pray. Prayer for me is a communication. Uh, prayer is not necessarily, uh, we have to lock ourselves up in the room. We have to pray one hour, two hours. No, it's a constant communication. Just look at it this way. The way you regulate, I mean, you, 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 the way you talk to your your family, your children, your wife, your husband, your boss at work, your colleagues at work. It's the same thing. You fellowship, you talk back and forth. So prayer is like that. You, you, you go to God in prayer all the time. You, you pray, you talk to Him, have fellowship with Him on a regular basis. It's very, very important. These are basics we need to have in your life as Christian. And number three, you need to meditate, of course. You have to meditate on the Word, of what you have read. You have to meditate with the Holy Spirit because He's the one that expands those things in your spirit, man. So it's important for you to meditate on what you read, on what you study, and what you're praying for. Then number four, you need to believe what you read. Because sometimes we read these things, we say, no, but if God is so, I so why is that what's happening to me? Then you have sort of a double mind, you know. God, the Bible said, people with double mind, God does not walk with them. It's clear in the book of James. If you're a double-minded person, you say you are like a wave. You've just been blown everywhere. So God does not have, he ain't got no time for you. It's not going to work with you at all you must believe what you read meditate upon it and let that word become life unto you now number six this is very important now you've studied you meditate you understand the word of god you know how things are supposed to be now satan is going to come and when he's going to come he starts suggesting those things to you what you should do or what you shouldn't do now you need to use the word of god that you have studied against him because if you even look at jesus when he came to jesus for tempting after when he came to tempt him 
Jesus was using the word of God. Jesus didn't go into argument with him. Can you turn this bread, turn these stones into bread? Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that proceeded out of the man of God. Good. Jesus said, I mean, he asked Jesus again, can you jump from this cliff down? Then, I mean, the Spirit of God will come, they will rescue you, blah, blah, blah. Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And these were scriptures Jesus was quoting to him from the Old Testament. And the Bible said, after all this, Satan left him for a season. I mean, he came back some other time. So he will keep coming back. He's not going to stop. He will keep coming back. You need to understand that. But now when he comes back, what do you use? You need to know the word of God so that you'll be able to counter him. Now, it's work this way. When you counter, to maintain social distance, as we are told, you need to keep six, is it six meters? I can't remember now. You need to keep a certain feet or meters apart from each other. In other words, stay a little bit apart from each other. You can talk to each other, blah, but from a distance. Same thing. When Satan comes, you use the word of God against him, he will keep at bay. He will move back. And I know all. Oh, he knows what he's talking about. He comes again, you throw it back at him. Thou says the Lord, or the word of God says, Thou shalt not. And when you hear, Thou shalt not, from the word of God, he will, he will leave you alone for a season. Of course, he will always come back, you know. Because you need to tell him what you know. You need to let him know this is what the scripture says. And once he starts to understand that, he will start keeping a distance. Don't let him get close to you. Because what he does is that first of all, he suggests something to you. You maintain it, you listen to it, you entertain it. Next thing, he's going to get close and begin to whisper it more and more and more. The more you allow him to get close to you, you are not maintaining a social distance. You're actually maintaining a fellowship with him. Because by allowing him to come closer to you, to continue to repeat those things to you, and you are not responding back to, to, to him the way you ought to by using the word of God, you are not maintaining a social distance with him. But when it comes straight at you, you say, hey, thus says the Lord, or oh, here is the word of God. He will move back. So, oh, this one knows what he's talking about. I'm going to try him out. He will come again. You, you throw it back at him. He will keep that distance from you. But like I said, if you listen to him, say, hey, what did you say? He said, okay, okay. He will repeat it. Then he comes close. Before you know, he's sitting next to you. You are having a conversation. Before you know, you are walking according to his will. And now, let me tell you another trick of his, which I've come to understand. The scripture, has made, um, the Holy Spirit has made me to understand it. It has helped me to actually walk against him quite often. When he comes to you, he puts you under that temptation. Sometimes you yield to that temptation. What does he do? He takes you now, the same Satan who have told you what to do, and you listen to him. He's the same one that's going to take you onto, onto God. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. And remember, the scripture says that when Jesus was describing Satan, he didn't just start describing him as the mighty fallen, as later known of him. He used a very few words. He said he is the father of lies. So if you ever think of anything lies in this world, that is opposite to what God's word says. The Bible says he's the genius of that. He is the, he's the creator of lies. And that's what he lived by. He lived by his name. A liar. So Satan will never come to you with something that is honesty and of the truth. In fact, the scripture said he will come in disguise. Presenting something that looks out of this world that looks so honest as though truthful and all that but the bible said that's the way he come to deceive in other words he is a deceitful being there's no truth in him so when he throws suggestion to you as much as he wants to peddle it as of, 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 of something of truth you need to be aware of his trick the number one when you listen to him, then you obey what he says, and you believe what he says, and you act upon what he says. You have taken a word that is not yours from him and make it your own. Then you acted upon it. Now, here is my problem with him. He will come after lying to you, you do that thing out. He is the same one that will carry what you have just done to go and report you to the master. And that's God, your creator. He will tell God, did you notice so and so and so, what he has just done? Contrary to what you told him not to do. Now, accuser. He starts to accuse you to God. 
And here you are now, you are left on your own defense before God. He's not going to say, he asked you to do it. You know, some people will say, oh, Satan made me do it. Have you heard that phrase? It's a very common phrase. Oh, the devil made me do it. He said, yes, he made you do it. The same devil is not going to stand with God to, 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 to sort of defend on your behalf because he can't defend nobody. He's a liar. He will tell, he will tell God, you did see him? He just did that. Now, he is accusing you to he that not, who is not able to not prosecute you and sentence you. Now you are left in your own defense. Now that you are not left in your own defense, you are not feeling guilty. You are coming to God weeping and crying and wailing. And Satan is standing there folding your hands, not acknowledging that he made you do it. Even though you are saying he made me do it, he is looking at your face telling you, I, I, didn't, do, I didn't do that. He's denying to your face right there. That's why you cannot plead on your behalf. So, you need to be careful who you listen to. Because when he deceives you to do these things, he's not going to come to your defense. Now you are in trouble. Because now <laughs> you are in trouble, you start calling on the name of Jesus. Lord, I need your help. Find God for the covenant we have in Christ, who the Bible said is pleading on our behalf. So, Jesus, you now have to plead through the name of Jesus for that, what you have done, for your wrongs to be forgiven. And Satan will now stand there accusing you unto condemnation. Do you see his trick? And that's the reason why we need to maintain a social distance from the devil. Because he's not a friend and he will never be a friend. As much as he's come with this coattail stuff around you, he's not going to be. There's no truth or honesty with him. So you need to be aware of this trick. Because not only does he accuse you to do it, I mean, not only does he uh, uh, permit you or play on your mind to do it, he's still the same one who's going to report you, see what you've just done, and ask for God to condemn you. And if Christ does not intervene, you are on your own. And the Bible says what comes after that is death. For the wages of sins is what? Death. For all have sin. The wages, the payment of sin is death. Except you accept Christ, you acknowledge Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is where you have a hope. Outside that, condemnation follows. So that's what Satan does. His tricks is to what? Come close to you, take over your mind, tell you what to do, what not to do, and when everything backs fire, he's still the same one that's going to take you to God and begin to accuse you before the Master. And again, these are the way he carry out his operation. So your, operation, your ways of operation is to distance yourself by using the word of God against him because he doesn't like that. If he knows that you know the word of God, he now knows that you know the truth, how the truth works. Then you counter against him. Whenever he comes, you quote the scripture. So says the Lord, says the scripture. The word of God says so, the word of God says so. And he wants you to continue to maintain that against him. He will maintain a distance from you. So no more socializing together with your enemy. No more talking together, having a chit chat together. Uh, spiritual WhatsApping or whatever is no longer there because now you have got it. And when you have not been listening to his conversation, he's not able to trick you into what he normally does. That is to sin. He has nothing to accuse you of before the Father. And the Bible says your life will be filled with peace that passes all understanding. This it sounds common, but that's true. If we know how to maintain that, you know, and as you keep doing this, your thoughts also start to grow. You start becoming a better Christian. You better to own, you start having a better understanding how the truth works, how the Lord works. You cut off every suggestion from the enemy by not taking anything from him, by using the word to maintain that social distance. Just like what we have to do now because of COVID-19 or the coronavirus, we're maintaining a social distance. We cannot talk to, we cannot come close to each other. So you need to use the word of God as a weapon or as an instrument to have a conversation with him. Don't go into direct conversation. Don't you think you should do this? Tell him, no, I don't need to ask you. I don't need to, you don't need to suggest to me. Let me ask the Lord. What does the word of God say? That's what you need to do. And when you do this, I bet you, you're maintaining what I call a social distance with the devil. Because oftentimes, Satan wants to have a social relationship with us, which he does, 
almost on a regular basis, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on a minute by minute basis. He's constantly around us, telling us what to do, don't do this, don't do that. Sometimes you get confused in what you're hearing. You don't know whether it's the voice of God or it's the voice of the devil. And he can be so convincing because why? He is the father of lies. He will make it easy, make it beautiful, make it look wonderful to do those things. Just a little bit. Try this out. Try that. Oh, that is okay. That, after all, it's your life. Nobody should tell you what to do. It's your right. Nobody should ask you what to do. Da, da, da. No, you do have to listen to your creator, the voice of your master, the voice of your creator, which is God himself, Jehovah. And to do that, you need to hear his word. You don't own yourself. You just can't do whatever you like in this world. It doesn't belong to you. Your life does not. What, that life you live, you think is yours, it's not yours. It's a borrowed life. That's the reason death can take it away from you. But through Christ, we have eternal life. So the life you live is not yours. Oftentimes, you know, it's my life. I can decide what I want. No, you cannot. It's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. You're just borrowing. You're living in the borrowed body. That's the reason why we're accountable to what we do. So, Let's take that in mind and know the best way to live a good and healthy spiritual life is to maintain a social distancing from the devil. God bless you. Bye-bye.